On August 14, 1947, on the eve of India being freed from British rule, Nehru, India's Prime Minister gave a magnificent speech called A Tryst with Destiny. This is the shape of his speech. It follows the presentation form perfectly. You'll notice that he starts off with what is, moves back and forth between what is and what could be, ultimately ending his speech describing the new bliss. So let's break this down. The beginning of the speech is the most popular and most cited part of the speech. You'll notice that Nehru actually moves between what is and what could be rapidly at the phrase level. Long years ago, we made a tryst with destiny. And now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge, not wholly or in full measure, but very substantially. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. A moment comes, which comes but rarely in history, when we step out from the old to the new, when an age ends, and when the soul of a nation, long suppressed, finds utterance. It is fitting that at this solemn moment, we take the pledge of dedication to the service of India and her people and to the still larger cause of humanity. The rest of his speech follows this pattern in almost perfect frequency, moving back and forth between what is and what could be. Now let's look at the theme for every section. The first time he establishes what is, he talks about how long the quest has been going on for India, but we have an opportunity for greater triumph. Then he acknowledges all the pain and the sorrow the audience has suffered, but then he assures them that the suffering will end. In the next What Is section, Nehru talks about how India is a fragmented country, but then now they will be a joined country. The past that cling to them would become a new hope that rises. Then he begins to talk about all the difficult problems that they have to solve and how they must face them with a spirit of discipline. He wanted to acknowledge that Gandhi had held the torch and that they must not let his torch blow out. It's really interesting that at the very last What Is segment, he covered the darkest, most tragic sacrifice that was made. It wasn't only about the lives lost in battle, but the family members that were cut outside of the territorial lines and the suffering. He goes to the darkest point of their history before he jumps in to the new bliss of what their future is going to look like. His ending's fantastic. Throughout his speech, he talked about a pledge, a pledge they made, pledges they'd broken, pledges they'd taken. And so, of course, his call to action was to have them make an actual pledge. He starts by asking a rhetorical question. He says, the future beckons us, whither do we go, and what shall be our endeavor? And then he gives them their call to action, which is actually part of the pledge. This pledge is filled with powerful verbs. He says that we need to bring freedom, that we're going to fight, that we're going to build, and that we're going to create, that we're going to bring fullness of life to every man and every woman. Those are really big verbs he's asking them to pledge to do. But then he has to give a little dose of reality that more of this little what could be to happen, basically that they're going to have to work really hard for freedom and democracy. There's no resting for any one of them. We need to live up to this new high standard. And then he ends with a new bliss, which was a very poetic piece, a salutation. He says, And to India, our much-loved motherland, the ancient, the eternal, and ever new, we pay our reverent homage, and we bind ourselves afresh to her service. Jay Hind, which means long live India. Nehru shared his own love for his India, and he wooed the people to rally together to fall in love with their country and to be united again.